How is the word que used? I play Scrabble. I'm learning words with the letter Q. What is the usage of the word que? Que can usually be read as the word as. It is an occasionally useful, and rarely used, link word in English. I was just reading about Quay and Fowler's, including the third ed by Birchfield, a couple of days ago. Says Fowler, the real occasion for the use of Quay occurs when a person or thing spoken of can be regarded from more than one point of view or as the holder of various coexistent functions, and a statement about him, or it, is to be limited to him in one of these aspects. Quay lover he must be condemned for doing what Quay citizen he would be condemned for not doing. Here, the lover aspect is distinguished from another aspect in which he may be regarded. The two nouns, or pronouns, must be present, one denoting the person or thing in all aspects, he, and the other singling out one of his or its aspects, lover, or citizen. This was the only way in which Fowler preferred the word be used, but in fact, notes Birchfield, it's often used in other ways. Between identical nouns, x quay x, as an emphatic version of as. The presence of actual words is apt to confuse any estimate of the evocative power of the music quay music. I don't think that Hard Times is a particularly good novel quay novel, whatever it may be as a social document. James Kirkup's poem about Jesus, is, an indefensibly bad poem quay poem. And sometimes, merely as as. It cannot, quay film, have the scope of a large book. I.e., it cannot, as a film, quay phonetician, De Saussure has no interest in making precise the notion of species. Dressed in an Armani suit and espadrilles, he plays a cop quay existential hero. But the word can seem pretentious, so you may want to avoid it, it usually adds nothing over as, anyway. Birchfield ends with, and as to usage, as is often the better choice of word, quay word. It's from Latin, meaning what or as. The entry at dictionary.com gives this example. The work of art quay art can be judged by aesthetic criteria only. The point, aside from sounding a little pretentious, would be to contrast art quay art with, say, art as a commercial enterprise, where the criteria would be whether a particular piece is saleable. It's also used as part of the phrase, also from Latin, sine qua non, meaning something essential to something else, money is sine qua non for an American political campaign. Beware that quay are truly three heteronyms, e, same spelling, but different meaning and pronunciation. So user Alex's answer above does not refer to the same quay, it only introduces two of the three heteronyms. Here is a helpful Venn diagram that depicts the relationships between pronunciation, spelling, and meaning of words. I excerpt, but don't quote fully, Wiktionary on Quay. For ease of readability, I eschew the use of greater than. In brief, and if I haven't erred, the meaning of as, discussed above, matches etymology 1. The use in sign Quay non matches etymology 2. Etymology 1, of 3, adverb declined from key, not comparable. On which side, at or in which place, in what direction, where, by what way, quay. Ea. As, in the capacity or character of. In so far as, e.g. in squayans, being as being. In what way, how, by what method, to what degree or extent. Etymology 2, of 3. Pronoun equals, ablative feminine singular of key, who, which. Etymology 2, of 3. Pronoun, equals, ablative feminine singular of key. I first encountered Quay, repeatedly, many years ago in a translation of Thomas Aquinas's Summa Theologica, who used the Latin, were to convey a specific meaning involving the calling out of a particular inherent quality or identity of a given thing. The term seems to retain a special sense in analytical philosophical works today. Here's a discussion of Quay and Richard Cross, The Metaphysics of the Incarnation, Thomas Aquinas to Duns Scotus, 2002. 
My term qua is thus correctly understood as in virtue of. This definition of reduplication is found most clearly in Scotus 8.10, quae, properly denotes that that which follows it is the formal reason for the inherence of the predicate, such as a human being, quae white, or quae colored, is seen apostrophe dot 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 think of white Socrates. It is true of white Socrates that he is colored qua white, and it is false of him that he is colored qua man, but this obviously does not entail that Socrates qua man is not colored, if it did, Socrates would be, absurdly, both colored and not colored. The speculative analysis is more interesting. Consider the following from Aquinas, 8.11, just as in human and corporeal matters those things which it can be called into doubt whether they belong to a whole or a part, we do not ascribe to the whole simply or without determination if they inhere in a part, for we do not say that an Ethiopian is white, but that he is white according to his teeth. Aquinas's point here is that the predicate white is not true of the whole Ethiopian but only of his teeth. Using Quasar to pick out the sense of Quay, Aquinas thus accepts the following definition of Quasar. B. X quasar y is f equals y is a part of x, and y is f dot quasar is thus as Aquinas presents it a sign of synecdoche. It qualifies the subject by modifying the reference of the subject term. The terms qua and quasar that Cross uses, above, in his analysis of the formal logic of Aquinas and Duns Scotus are thus special subcategories of the more general reduplicative sense of qua, as in virtue of, that he ascribes to Scotus near the outset of the extract. Evidently one way in which quay continues to be used today is by modern scholars in connection with analyzers and discussions of the logic of medieval philosophers.